Second question was conflict of interest through financial association. Yes, that has actually happened. Uh, in the legislation there's a specific rule which says if you're receiving any direct financial benefit from an ART centre, you must uh, finish. So the particular colleague who was from the ART was originally attached to a university working in the ART, so he was re receiving his funds from the university. He's now changed his position. It's not a question of any discretion. He's had to resign. And I think it's going to be quite challenging in this area to find a replacement uh, who, is, who is not tied up with the actual ART procedures. Because the legislation is quite clear. You've got to be absolutely independent from the procedure. Thank you. So we have uh, three more papers, uh, and these are from yesterday's session, and they kindly agreed to moving forward to today. The first is by Masato Motoki, and it will be on observations of uh, education for sustainable development, animal rights, and culture. And the abstracts for these papers are on page 20 to 21. Um, thank you. Um, uh, first of all, thank you for inviting me today. I really appreciate this. And also, I want to say my special thanks to a gentleman who remembered me. Even though I was attending the last meeting as a kind of uh, with refrigerator carrier or tea provider or even photocopier. Thank you. So today, uh, I would like to talk about uh, my observation on environmental education and animal rights and awareness. But even saying so, it's not so much about ethics or even animal rights. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, awareness and action. Learning from reality. Grassroots activity. First, I'd like to start with the recognition of environmental issues in Japan. Because this will explain why I'm going to study the awareness and action, grassroots, and then learning from reality. According to a survey conducted to 377 Japanese office workers asking how much are you concerned about environmental issues? About almost 90% of respondents showed concern. However, when asked what are environmental related contributions or improvement at your office, I mean, what actually you are doing for environment? Response were less than 40% in every category, like saving energies, or committing by car, uh, not by car, by transportation for public. Only disposal of rubbish, which scored over 60%. In other survey, in Japan, almost the same question was conducted to uh, the public, aged 15 to 59, environmental issues ranks top among several social activities. 80% answered that they are responsible for damaging the environment. Also, 70% are trying to change their lifestyle so that it saves more water and energy. However, the participation of civil activities with regard to environmental protection, both less than 10%. So now, I can say that strong concern about environmental issues. However, little environmental activity relative to strong concern. So now, this is how 
I want to study how people can become aware of the issue and decide to take on the action. For example, even you providing environmental ethics norm or biotics, then the understanding or knowledge of uh, biotics increasing, this is not meaning, I think, how they actually behave for a bioethical decision or biotech yes, situation. So first, the method is a questionnaire and hearing survey conducted on activists. Main focus, what made you aware of issue and decide to take on action? Because these person are already decided to take an action, so I want to see why they decide to take action. Because I can apply this idea to biotechs or environmental education so that they are more like a practical way. So surveys conducted on seven members of animal rights movement and 20 youth working in or aiming to work in environmental protection or environmental education. Now, I see two main factors responsible for awareness and activity. First, special experience involving animal or environmental issues are extracted. For example, finding abandoned pets on the streets or forest near a living place destroyed for, for construction. So now, I'd like to point out that learning from reality is an important factor. However, this learning are done almost by chance. So the point is how this learning is going to be done. <coughs> the second point will answer this point. Grassroots experience in animal rights or environmental activists are well responded. Sorry. I mean, many respondents indicated joining grassroots activity lead to working on these issues or get to know how to work for them. So the conclusion of my study is considering grassroots activity as a key factor for providing learning from reality and action taking. Because the uh, grassroots activity is a good place to move their knowledge into action. Then here's my father's study. My father's interest in collaboration with other sectors, meaning formal education or municipal municipality to promote, expand and populate learning from reality. Also, this is the reason I came here today, because there's so many people here who is responsible for making programs. So I think if somebody is interested in this idea, could you put or consider this idea for your program? Uh, thanks for listening. Thank you. Are there any uh, questions or comments? Yes, Morgan. Um, I think that, that that commonly, I mean, that reflects the common truth about individuals having concern about the environment, but living in an environment where that concern has no ability to really be expressed and that the local scale and the global scale are really being outcompeted by the middle scale which in real terms means corporations, governments and institutions are setting up which are, which are run by a vast minority of people are in fact have uh, institutionalised barriers to the desires and the ability of ordinary people to 
follow their what they truly believe. That's a comment. Yes, yeah, thank you. Well, now, I want to say that in Japan, especially people living in the city, a bit staying far from the wheel. I mean, many people will not see what actually happening on their eyes. They will not maybe experiencing. I think uh, your idea is very good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Aruna, please, in the back. It's not a question, I'm just seeking clarification. Did you find out whether animals are ill-treated and put to torture when they are used? Did you find out? Did you find out, yeah, find whether out. animals are tortured, put to ill-treatment? Mm -hmm. So the, the, comment, the question is, did you, Masato find any cases of ill-treatment of animals? In, in your study? I think these cases are happening. Some uh, animal rights movements are actually in Japan. That's why I contacted to them. Um, yes, actually they are happening, but not very co common, I think. Yes. Okay, uh, Nat, please. Yeah. Thank you very much. I'm from the Pacific Islands. I'm very interested in your findings and uh, I tend to agree absolutely with uh, your conclusions. And uh, I'm very concerned about uh, the huge amounts of uh, workshops and the teaching on the environment going on in the Pacific and maybe elsewhere. And what you are pointing out is uh, the, the importance of actually field experience. Huh? And I think it's also important for people that are trying to introduce uh, courses in high schools and universities, the importance of uh, field work. But uh, I also want to remind you about uh, someone speaking yesterday or the day before about the importance of religion. And uh, if a society has already got a religious uh, tradition, to try and uh, link environment with uh, their religious tradition. Because uh, th this is one way by which, by just talking, we can uh, influence uh, attitude and behavior. For example, uh, the experience from the Christian tradition, where they already believe in love thy neighbor. So uh, in, uh, in the rural communities, so the, uh, in the rural Christian communities, they already have this uh, they know that Jesus talk about uh, love your neighbor. It's a very important principle. But when the environmentalists try to link this uh, principle, this uh, religious principle into uh, environmental ethics and tell the people, see what your uh, Bible is saying, this is also you can apply in the environmental context, then people, uh, then they can easily be attracted to follow that. So uh, thank you for your conclusions. I uh, totally agree but uh, also consider the importance of uh, religion and communities that have a strong religious uh, tradition. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Actually, thinking about uh, this collaboration, it's very important. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Yes, please. Paul, with that. Um. Um, Jirapon, please. Yeah. I have oh, never been to talk here to Japan yet, but I've been to Sweden, and I know how important of the environment. You live in Sweden like living in Eden Garden, <laughs> I think, because uh, when you stay <coughs> in the house, you can see the lake and the duck running around, <coughs> and I want my country to be like that. But in Thailand, our people destroy our environment a lot. And now the government realized that. And they asked all the factory to donate the money, the income, to
to uh, grow the new forest and donate to any school that would like to have the program to preserve the environment. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Paul Pen. Um, thank you very much, Masato. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Valsala, awaiting liberation of animals from experimental clutches. Thank you. So good evening, everybody. My topic is awaiting liberation of animals from experimental clutches. So in recent times, biotechnology uh, is the most controversial scientific discovery due to its good and bad effects on the ethical and social aspects of human beings. So biotechnology has revolutionized the medical field by providing new and efficient tools to combat diseases. Examples, human insulin, interferon, monoclonal antibody, growth hormones are some of the main examples. Many chem new chemicals such as amino acids, vitamins, enzymes, and the biological molecules are available in greater amount. So in order to advance biotechnology, human beings are exploiting uh, animals. All must seek the truth with open minds and consciousness. Science as much experience teaches that it's no longer possible to assume that animals are mere machines or bundles of instincts and reflex. They have their own rights to flourish in freedom or languish under oppression. So uh, this human encroachment on the natural world made life of animals so terrible. The past 90s can be rightly called as age of exploitation and age of embarrassment. So the explosive development of transgenic science is the ultimate exploitation of animals. Those gentle creatures that are labeled as farm animals, not being further farmed through genetic engineering, cause them suffering to wide range of deformities. Genetically altered laboratory animals are also being subjected to many invasive experiments. So due to the awareness of these facts, one can perhaps shock us into a painful reality that there is an urgent need of reaction. In order to reduce all exploitation of animals, we have to concentrate on animal experimentation and the use of animals for food. Mainly in research, animals are used. More than 1.5 million mites, rats, pigs, livestock, poultry, domestic animals are used in Australia each year. Nearly 4,89,000 in Victoria. There are some 45 million rats and mice are used in the laboratories each year in the United States alone. So, animal-based scientists have brought many benefits to animals as well as people. It's true that often not always the animals involved experience pain, suffering or other harm, even when great care is taken to avoid or to minimize it. So the application of R's principle, pre-R's principle, that's replacement, reduction, and refinement in the research will surely achieve most good with least harm. Careful application of this principle ensures that animals are only used 
when non animal alternatives are not suitable that's called replacement only the smallest number of animals required to achieve the aim of the work are used that's called reduction and that if any pain or suffering is caused during the work it is kept as low as possible that's called refinement so when we are using animals for the research all the researchers should um, bear in mind that these three as principle must be used in their research so next one is factory farming in among the many victims of the artificial mutations farm animals suffer the most in united states alone every year over 3 billion chickens get raised in the factory farms stuffed into crates on the trucks back of the trucks and then hung upside down on the conveyor belt and takes them to slaughter the entire lives of the farm animals are locked inside the factory warehouses manipulated by machines as if their sole purpose to be born was to be harvested by man this gentle creatures have never had a chance to see the sky or the smell of the earth they can never experience the pleasure or freedom of living beings like our pets the wildlife or ourselves farm animals are subjected to lifelong abuse by the most atrocious appalling manipulation invented by agro business their utter misfortune is caused by being labeled as food animals but they are still sentient beings not so different than we are the super pig must be endured side effects including creeping arthritis and distorted vision caused by the human growth genes that make them the cross-eyed pigs are being modified with human genes so that the organs of their offspring can be transplanted into humans so in addition to factory pig farms there will be pig organ farms our far and far animals not part of the animal kingdom sanctified by nature so it's time for us to listen the silence to plea of the factory farms factory farming organizations sino transplantation the last 100 years has witnessed many attempts to carry out animal to human transplants all have failed pigs are now being genetically manipulated to carry human genes in the hope that this catalog of failure and misery can be turned into a viable medical treatment approximately 6000 people are on the waiting list of human organs the sino transplantation offer the real hope or might it be done on the greatest medical disaster of all the time So now I am quoting some of the wordings of Professor Tony Minson, virologist, Cambridge University. He is saying that if we go ahead with sino transplantation, it will be a step in the dark. Dr. David White, founder of the Immortal Limited Biotechnology Company, at forefront of development of transplantation, says like this: There are a lot of viruses in pigs. that means pigs carry a lot of viruses one problem is that we have a kind of retrovirus that means the pigs that are utilized for sino transplantation they contain or carry a retrovirus a retrovirus in the family of viruses as that of hiv which cannot be cleaned from the pig because it is inherited in the pig's dna it can come out as an infectious virus so sino transplantation by sick for doing sino transplantation human beings are exploiting pigs drastically so next one is animals under knife so 
with the advances in genetic science, we can see that animals can now be bred to develop tumors or other diseases for scientists to experiment on. Melbourne scientists have experimented on genetically modifying mice and pigs with a view to eventually being able to create pig organs compatible with humans. Not only that, almost all the technical researchers, they are using a bundle of or a number lot of organisms under the knife for their research. The sacrifice of animals has been vital to the development of vaccines against mumps, rabies, polio and measles. These days, as genetic technologies develop, increasing numbers of animals are having gene structures altered in the hope of finding cures to some of the humanity's most intractable diseases. Next one is cloning. The technique of cloning or sexually producing duplicate parts of copies of individuals is another facility offered by biotechnology. It's now within the capability of scientists to remove or destroy the nucleus and human cell and replace, replace it with the nucleus from the somatic cell of any individual, individual, male or female, and reintroduce the cell into human, in whom it will develop into a human body that will be an exact replica of the donor of the somatic nucleus. So cloning is a clear case of manipulation of gen human genetic endowment. It also tends to undermine marriage and the family by severing the bond between marital love and procreation. It would render the male unnes unnecessary as far as procreation is concerned and give rise to serious problems about personal identity and individuality. So due to cloning, two years after Dolly, the sheep came to Helena and her clones. There were two generations of cloned mice. The scientific goal and the commentators were ecstatic. These researchers behind Dolly and sheep, let it be known that they had launched into a joint venture company with a half dozen lands, every one of which was expected to spawn a multi-billion dollar industry. Again, we can see that the new invented um, sheep, what's called jeep, we can see that there's a small lamb-like organism standing there. In the slide, we can see that that's called jeep. That's a mixture of goat and sheep. So cloning is successful, but we can see that the organism, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's having deformities. The organism ha has not had the uh, ability to work properly. That's called cloning, and that's the result of cloning. So important genetic failures are problems encountered. You know that uh, due to genetic engineering, we have engineered the super pig with a, horn, with a human growth hormone gene. It was arthritic, ulcerous, blind, and impotent. Then next one is the super salmon, engineered with no growth, growth fast genes from another fish, had a bulbous head, and died as a result of not being able to see, breathe, feed, or feed properly. That means, uh, we engineered a super salmon. So clones of Dolly and sheep, the big success story, are eight times as likely to die at birth compared with the normal lands. The genetically modified food supplement, l is believed to have caused at least 37 deaths in U.S. and left 1,500 permanently disabled. Genetically engineered soil bacteria, that dramatically inhibited the growth of wheat seedlings. So as my conclusion, technical innovations and their possible repercussion require ethical reflection on what it means to be human. When we are involved in research, we should guard and protect life and contribute to human dignity. The preservation of human life and the environment in the present and future must be the supreme motivation of all research. The goal of biotechnological research should be to preserve, protect, and reward life. 
the exploitation of animals by humans should be minimized. So yesterday we have seen that or we have heard that in during tsunami days animals, the jungle creatures, they have escaped from the uh, tsunami terrorists and then they have the ability to absorb or imbibe the supersonic waves and they escaped. So now we have we have to ask the question, who is superior, what we have lost. Our modern lifestyle has broken our roots with the Mother Earth. Should we not change our lifestyle and at least now? What is happening to our new universe? It's time for us to give the non-human organisms their own rights and to protect them with much care and provide properly their needs. We can do this in the following ways by giving the animals fresh water and right food at right amounts at right time. By keeping them in a place which suits them well and in, the, in this way minimizing for example exposure to extreme weather or physical comfort. Or by watching for signs of ill health or injury and getting veterinary help when necessary. By giving them appropriate exercise and then appropriate the company of animals of their own or another type. It's necessary to breed animals which tolerate particular environments, are less susceptible to diseases, and are more at ease when managed by people. Let now human organisms enjoy their rights fully. So it's time for us to think that we have to give the animals their own rights. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Irina. Thank you. Important talk. I think that's a really a case that well, you have to think very seriously, especially when you're looking at the farm animals and how they're suffering. And how can we actually reduce our numbers? It's really our population. And so little is being done. We are taking out all the resources. We are filling this planet. Our population increase is totally non-sustainable. We must really try and control our own excesses in reproduction if we're going to allow animals to use their own habitat and enjoy the habitat. Yeah. So it's true that it's time for us to think that over exploitation of natural resources by human or mankind uh, that's not ethical that means it's unethical so in the case of factory animals you know that uh, mostly we are um, culturing or developing uh, chickens in the factory farms now uh, in the few near future i think that uh, scientists are um, interested in culturing um, chickens with the genes of the centipedes. You know that the centipedes are having more legs. So if you are transplanting the genes of uh, centipedes to chickens, we will be getting more legs. We are not bothering about um, how this uh, organism which are transformed or uh, due to transgenic science, how they will survive. So that's what we have to think of about. We have to, all human beings are in need of their rights. Like that, we have to give the rights of the animals also. Thank you. In India, it is not so easy to use animals, as you have said, because they have animal rights group. I know one of my doctor students, he has to wait for five years because he was working on monkey brain. So he, he, has he could not complete his studies because now animal rights groups are very, very severe about how you are using your animals. And there is a protocol for that. If you want to use any animals, you have to justify how many animals you want to work on, what is the purpose, what type of injection you are going to give, what type of killing you are going to do, and uh, how many, what will be the mortality rate. Only if it is justified, you are allowed to do research. And another thing is, the previous speaker has said, grassroots, when you look at the grassroots reality, during Onam celebrations you would have seen truck loads of buffaloes being pumped into Kerala state for slaughtering. And if you could look at them, that's a greater tragedy than what we are doing to our farm animals. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's true that 
Um, in Kerala, uh, we have uh, this one uh, license and all for doing research. So, like that, I think, um, in my opinion, I'm saying that uh, we have to have um, license for all the organizations to do for re doing research. We have to have uh, license for all the organisms. I think then uh, human consumption also will be reduced. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So. <laughs> The uh, last paper of the day is also on animal, animal issues. Um, so Mary Kalarasi will talk about animal rights and ethics. I don't know if anyone's doing elephant tracking in Thailand, but it's another ethical issue. And I should uh, note that uh, when we have our textbook meeting, we're only having apples and biscuits. OK. Hi, everybody. Uh, let me first take up this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Ravi and the organizers and of course my guide and my colleague Dr. Silvana uh, Yesterday I uh, was talking to you about the importance of the precious lives of animals. Even we can use them as the uh, prediction tools for the major disasters as tsunami. And now I'm going to talk to you about the animal rights and ethics. Of course, animal ethics is a complex subject and it is rational argument about the right and wrong way of treating animals. And of course, it is more uh, difficult uh, since uh, many of us are having great and deep love for the animals. It reminds a question to the philosophers about the basis of moral rights and of course higher animals have a status and there are right and wrong ways of treating them. The term non-human animals has been used for uh, clarity since the animal kingdom is taken to include humanity. Of course as we all know the real ethical issues are the same sex marriage ethics of war, euthanasia, human cloning, genetic engineering, design of babies, and abortions as per the news. There are, of course, uh, more controversies with regard to the animal ethics. Uh, let me uh, give you and share uh, a few things with you with regard to the animal rights and ethics. Uh, in this, I would like to discuss with you about the cruelty to animals, hunting for food, animal use for fur, animal use in circus, whaling, animal use for entertainment, and experimenting on animals, such as now we have uh, gone through a paper, and of course the consequences. See, the violence and cruelty is increasing in the present society every day. In India, there are about 4,000 authorized slaughterhouses and many more unauthorized, in all of which uh, 1 lakh and 10,000 animals are slaughtered every day. More than 8 lakh cows were destroyed due to a sort of mouth and foot disease spread in UK. Thousands of cows are killed because of mad cow disease. And of course, it's a scene to uh, show you how they are uh, uh, brutally, I mean, brutally slaughtered without any mercy. And of course, this is to show the, how the animals are slaughtered for export. Man has become self-centered, uh, of course, cruel-hearted, and he has lost all sensitivity. It has resulted in ecological imbalance and environmental disaster. One of the most destructive practices now in the world level is killing animals for our use, like for food, fur, leather, ivory, cosmetics, and other industrial uses. Animals are kept in captivity, of course, in zoo and circus. The main controversies in animal ethics, Srimati Menaka Gandhi, the great champion for animal rights, said science was harnessed to business 
animals were reduced to raw materials and we invented factory farming battery cages junk food vivisection mechanized slaughter circuses zoo marine parks whaling and trawling billions of animals are killed maimed exterminated captured trade mutilated blinded beaten and enslaved and of course this is for food how we kill and use them is the same the hunting the animals are killed uh, for food by human the animals are killed for food by human but the ethics is lacking do we give importance for them or give them a chance to ask them do we respect their life no we take it for granted they are meant for us then ethics for animals remains a question mark then of course animals are used for fur and dinosaurs they are killed for the horn animal for the skin whaling for cosmetic and other industrial uses the hunting of animals the hunting of animals is the cruelty done to the animals the hunting of animals for hobby tusk fur leather and flesh etc are absolutely wrong ethically the hobby to kill animals is not acceptable as per the animal ethics and of course we also use animals for our own entertainment these are few examples for this and of course horse race riding and the animal we use in circus for our own entertainment using animals in circuses and entertainments is degrading for the animals it fails to treat animals with the respect they deserve and it is against animal rights to live in freedom the usage of animals in other entertainments is absolutely wrong we remove animals from their natural environment their natural habitat and culture it's a sort of cruelly cruelly doing during cruelty during the show for example rodeos during training also they undergo tortures the transport of animals may also involve cruelty for species maintenance of course it is acceptable when the animals are kept in the zoo for the species maintenance it is acceptable when they are treated properly and appropriately the zoo may not be able to maintain the gene pool in an equilibrium and of course experimenting on animals experimenting on animals and finding new drugs is wrong morally to make the animals for our use it causes suffering to animals and the benefits to human are not proven the level of suffering and animals that are sacrificed are very high compared to the benefits to humanity and of course we don't give any importance for the feeling of the animals We use animals like dog for our personal safety and protection and the police use the dogs for finding culprits but what ethics do we practice for animals remains a question mark With regard to 
the consequences due to encroachment of human in the naturally occurring animal population, it is sure the result will be disaster. It will affect the equilibrium maintained in the gene pool. Simple removal of animal from a population will affect the population structure, then of course the ecological permits, their ecosystems and in turn the hardy weinberg's law of equilibrium on one side. But on the other hand, we do have to face the ethical issues. Safeguarding of animals, the animals respect us and obey us. Why not we learn to respect them and give importance to their precious life? Why not we frame certain rules and regulations to safeguard them? We have a long way to walk, rectify and clear the pathway for the animals also to walk along with us. The flora and fauna are interdependent and any damage to them will have presidential, presidential impact which will be deleterious to our environment. Imbalance created due to anthropogenic activity to any population will bring about an undesirable impact on the equilibrium of the population. This in turn will affect the ecosystem and related factors in the biosphere. If animal ethics is taken care, then cruelty to animals and animal rights will be totally taken off. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, at the back, uh, well, I see Subota, but you're on the computer, it doesn't count. You're out of a room. Uh, you have to go. Aruna, please. If you want to come to ask a question, you don't sit at the internet. Thank you. Aruna, please. Aruna first. You are exaggerating and uh, the idea of animal rights and animal protection seems to be stretched to the limit. We require the animals. You cannot prevent people from eating animals, whether it is birds or uh, cows. You cannot uh, educate people, you cannot insist on the morals and say that they should not. That is not possible. You can say that you can limit the uses of animals. Only that much is possible according to the reality. I am not uh, forcing this on anybody, but that is the reality. You must take reality into consideration. Animals as it is, whether they are birds or insects, they have limited life. And uh, they face dangers in nature. There is nobody in nature to protect them. Their life is sometimes, it finishes off accidentally. Sometimes they live their life. Maybe for three days or for three months or for three years or for... 14 years or 15 years, they live, they complete their lives. And I think we cannot prevent the use of animals in experiments also. Even Mrs. Menaga Gandhi, she is far-fetched. She is taking it to the extremes. We require the animals. We require experiments on animals without which human health cannot be protected. So we, let us not stretch it too far. That's the only point I would like to make, whether you accept it or not. It's left to you. Thank you. But I don't think I'm exaggerating. I'm talking about the reality. And uh, what extent we can take action and uh, take care of animals, it depends. I'm not saying, uh, see, the uh, killing of animals for food, of course, it's a cheap protein available, so we make use of it. But of course, uh, cruelty to animals and taking them for our entertainment and luxury, I think it can be avoided always. Thank you. Uh, please don't get me wrong for asking this question. Uh, why should I care? For example, suppose I don't believe in God. I don't believe that apart from my pleasure, there is something else I should care about. And I don't believe in the norms and the societies uh, which, uh, you know, make rules and things like that. Maybe taking Nietzsche or Foucault to the extreme, can you tell me one good reason why I should be caring about animals? Please don't get me wrong, I am a vegetarian, by the way. <laughs> um, so, thank you, sir, for the question. Why should we care for animals? Then, uh, why, do we, uh, why we have gathered here to talk about uh, uh, ethics? And, of course, one among the ethics is animal ethics. 
Okay, I, I'm not talking about us. There are some people who will not be coming here and discussing about ethics. For example, serial killer, paid murderer, or you know, th that kind of thing. Can you tell him or her one good reason why he or she should care about fellow human beings, animals later on? <laughs> but I feel... Uh I don't have the answer, I'm asking you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think uh, as human beings and we call as we have sixth sense and of course environment protection, the eco-ethics, taking care of all this, definitely the ecosystem has to be maintained and of course the uh, animal population cannot be affected. Uh, I agree with your uh, talk and thank you for providing pictures which um, have a thousand words. Um, I agree with animal rights to the extent that it doesn't um, compromise ecological rights which um, into so for example with introduced species uh, removing the biodiversity of native species uh, sometimes the larger scale units are more important to be preserved than the individual animals and plants involved and that if you can protect an ecosystem at the habitat scale you also protect the animals and plants contained within that so the um, ecosystem and habitat scale is the best level at which management and conservation should be directed. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the uh, presentation. I would like to draw attention on, on another exaggeration, so to speak, or, or another sort of cruelty to animals in my opinion, which I think happens in Japan, uh, where many people have pets, there are, and they they do <laughs> they dress the dogs, they they take them to massage parlors, they and it's 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 getting into into a craze, uh, which to me is is. Uh, kind of cruelty to animals they are not they are not walking the animals on their own feet they are carrying the animals uh, in as they would carry a baby the <laughs> I wonder whether the animals enjoy that or not uh, this is uh, a good uh, thing that you have brought in uh, see we feel that uh, animals are happy are keeping them as pets and we feel whatever they want we are getting more than they what they want we are giving as dress or whatsoever it may be but i don't think uh, they will be comfortable or happy however we are taking care of them thank you i just want to add one point into the question of the uh, doctor doctor from internet <laughs> yeah. That means in order to maintain the ecological balance, we have to respect, give respect to each other, as well as to maintain the equilibrium of the of the delicate balance. We have to cope with that. If 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 we don't have any faith, uh, that means um, it will go like that. That's all. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank, thank you. you very much. Well, thank you to everyone. Uh, now I want to just make a point. Tomorrow. Yeah. No, I just to to the okay, okay, Tomiko, okay, you can respond to the Japanese massage animals, go ahead. But use a microphone though. So uh, I'll be very brief. I just want to respond to um, the comment you made about the Japanese pet situation. Um, now this um, animal rights movement or animal rights um, concept itself doesn't really, I mean, in my opinion, you know, my take is that it doesn't really exist in a contemporary Japanese society, and it, it's pretty much driven. I mean, to me, it seems the animal rights movement or the concept is something really born in a you know Western society, 
so that um, people are really not aware of um, you know th this the concept of animal has right to live naturally so um, one one second is fine <laughs> With your permission. So, <laughs> Dr. Meser and another person were traveling in an aeroplane. Meser was insisting the neighbor, we will play a game. You, I will ask you a question. If you tell the answer, I will give you $5. If you don't tell the answer, you will give me back my $5. But the person was not interested. Then it is increased to $50. Then the person was interested. So, Meser asked a question about bioethics. She gave back the $5 to him. Then afterwards, the lady asked the messer, what goes with three legs up and comes back with four legs? So Dr. Messer could not answer that. Then finally, he gives back $50 to the lady. And he asks, what is the right answer? The lady gives back $5. <laughs> OK, thank you. You want another comment? Oh, dear. OK, we'll be in the song soon, I think. Only the minute. Uh, five or six years before in Tsukuba down to discussion, I discussed where is, why where is bad, where is animal or not. Five or, five or six years before we discussed where. Yes, and sex, you can see in the older, on the conference links, you can find the paper on the whaling. It's a very controversial issue. Thank you. So um, I was going to say uh, thank you for attention today and uh, your concentration. We have a five-minute break, or five or ten-minute break, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the textbook. There is an agenda, and I think most people have a copy of the agenda. If you don't, you can ask Catherine, who will stand up now to show. And uh, its textbook project meeting is welcome to everyone. We're trying to expand uh, some practical resources to share teaching resources uh, on the internet in multiple languages, and we have already in a few languages this textbook. Um, so, and we have a new edition which I'd like to talk. And the chapter off is many of them are in this room. And it may be interesting for you to see the faces behind the chapters. And we, we will just have some biscuits and apples. Um, uh, so uh, we'll finish at 8 o'clock. And uh, so I'm not sure you're, uh, how you'll survive. But I hope you will. Tomorrow, you have to be up at the, in the bus by 7 o'clock. And we've changed, uh, the bus is going to be actually at the lobby of the Impala Hotel. And most of you are staying in the Impala Hotel, it's actually better. There'll be two buses. Once the first bus is full, uh, those people will be heading off to try.